Hey, hi everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, welcome to our Learn with Google webinar entitled Get Started with Google Shopping. We're really excited to have you here. And before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items and give you a quick tour of your presentation console. So first of all, on the left side of the screen, you'll see a Q&A box. Um, please feel free to chat in any questions throughout the webinar, and I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, you can also use this box if you're having any technical issues, and we'll be sure to get you back on track. So second thing to go over, I want to point out some of the widgets on the bottom. I won't go over all of them, but a few important ones. Um, first of all, the Twitter widget. Uh, you can use this to tweet directly from the console. It automatically adds today's hashtag, which is Google Shopping. Additionally, and this is a good one to remember, the resource list, this is that little green folder. It has links to extra information and sites you might want to check out related to today's webinar, um, including the Google Shopping site. Last but not least, and a plug for ourselves, uh, please do note the survey widget. Um, we really value your feedback, and we definitely use it to make our webinars better. So as an added bonus for today, everybody who fills out the survey will be entered to win a Nexus, Nexus 7, so make sure to do that before you exit. And one last thing, um, the webinar will be recorded, so um, look for it in your email in a few days' time. So let's get started. Um, first, to introduce myself, my name is Nicole Primo, and I'm a partner manager on the Google Shopping team. Basically, my job is to help merchants who sell products online get up and running with product listing ads. So this content is right up my alley, and I'm really excited to be here today. We have a lot of good stuff to share, so I want to dive right in so we make use of our time. All right. So, First, I want to just go quickly through an agenda so you know what to expect. Um, our audience is a mix of folks who are new to Google Shopping today, as well as some of those who are farther along and looking for tips on kind of optimizing existing campaigns. So I'll start with a quick overview of the new shopping experience, and then I'll follow up with some case studies of real-world examples. Um, finally, I'll cover steps to actually start optimizing and uh, creating your PLAs um, and some best practices direct from my team. We'll finish with a Q&A uh, session, so again, do feel free to chat in those questions as they come up. So first up, that quick refresher. I want to start today by looking at the actual consumer behavior. Um, you know, you can imagine consumer behavior has changed drastically in the last couple of years, so I want to make sure we're all on the same page. First, so consumers shop through Google search. Millions of people start their uh, search and shopping journey right here every day. Um, they search for products at every point in their purchase journey. So whether they're looking to discover new products, um, select from a range of products, or actually choose a particular product that they already know they want, this is where they start. Um, you know, kind of the idea is whether it's a digital camera that they've been thinking about for months and months, or whether it's a dress that they saw in a celebrity magazine, we want to provide the product that they're looking for. So on top of this, we know that consumers search at any time of the day. They also search from any device, from mobile phones to tablets and computers. And finally, they search from anywhere and everywhere. The idea is that you know, consumers live in a multi-device world, and it's also an always-on world. So consumers are not only hyper-informed, but they're hyper-connected too, which makes you know, advertising products a little trickier because you want to make sure to get the right message in front of the right user on the right device at the right time of day. So consumers start with search. We provide them myriad options. Um, we provide them comparison shopping abilities. We provide them the ability to ultimately select the best product. There's also this consideration phase where it takes place you know, at home, at the bus stop, you know, wherever they're thinking about that product purchase. And once the consumer has made that decision, they have multiple options to make the purchase. In fact, today's consumers expect to be able to shop both at home in kind of more traditional online ways but also on the go with easy mobile experiences. It's, shopping is now a dynamic online and offline experience, and retailers have more opportunities than ever to deliver the right message at the right time. So 
So mobile devices have played an especially important role in recent years. I don't think that's a surprise to pretty much anybody, but I want to just kind of highlight this fact a little bit with some key statistics. So in a recent Compete survey, when consumers were asked the question, which of the following did you do on your mobile devices while shopping for apparel, we found, so 56% compare prices on their mobile device, 44% look for promotions or coupons, 42% read reviews, 38% search inventory, 16% actually scan a barcode while in the store, and 13% contact a retailer or manufacturer through other than phone methods. So think, you know, email forms or online forms on a website. So we understand kind of who the consumer is, um, but how should retailers respond is kind of the big next question. Ultimately, you know, the consumer has changed, but marketing fundamentals and advertising fundamentals haven't. The goal is always and probably always will be to drive the right consumer to your sales or to your products. Um, you know, we want to make sure that the right message gets to them at the right time, in the right place. You'll hear me say that a lot today. And really, the more relevant your message, the better and more likely a sale is to result. So how does Google Shopping actually kind of take all of this and synthesize it into getting the right ads in front of the right people? So search gives us the consumer's intention. Um, you know, we know that somebody is searching for a digital camera. Easy enough. But that alone is not super helpful in today's kind of multimodal world. Um, we also get to know their context. Um, so context being, you know, what device is a searcher searching from? Uh, where are they? What time of day? Um, you know, devices, again, PCs, tablets, smartphones, where they're located is not just necessarily their physical location, like a city. It can also be, are they at home? Are they, you know, downtown in a major city? Um, you know, what stores are there nearby? And we also know their time of day. So not only is it the weekend or the, you know, week, but also is it before or after the local store's hours? So when you put these two things together, you have quite a bit of opportunity to drive relevant messaging. So not only do you know what they're looking for, but you also know, like I said, all those things, where they are, what time of day, um, and what device they're using. I want to give you two examples of how this plays out in um, kind of in real life. So in the example on the left, the consumer is searching for a digital camera on her phone in the evening while browsing downtown stores. As a result, we're going to serve her mobile product search results. This will highlight nearby stores that carry specific camera models that she might be looking for. In contrast, in the example on the right, um, the consumer who enters the same search query digital camera but is at home on his laptop will see different results. So he will see results that allow him to easily compare different brands as well as continue his experience on Google Shopping, which gives him even more ability to compare reviews um, as well as compare products side by side. So with all that in mind, I'd like to take a minute to show you some of the key areas of the Google Shopping experience. Google Shopping is a new experience for consumers for finding, researching, and discovering where to buy products online and nearby. Um, it helps you as merchants showcase your products when shoppers are searching for your products on Google.com, when they're discovering and researching products on Google.com forward slash shopping, also called Google Shopping, um, and when they're shopping on the go via a Google Shopper app as well as the Google, Google Shopping mobile website. So to start, um, in order to showcase your products, you have to have what are called product listing ads. Um, here's an example of how a product listing ad would appear when a user searches for digital camera on Google.com. just kind of zooming in on that top result a little bit closer, you want to think of these product listing ads as your store shelf on Google.com. They're a great visual way for your business to be in consideration for potential buyers. Um, notice that consumers can see images of your products, titles, as well as prices at a glance. 
um, by clicking on a particular product, they'll be taken to a product page, so where they get the full details and can actually purchase. They can also choose, you'll notice at the top, um, to actually continue their shopping experience on google.com forward slash shopping. They'll have many, many more options here as well as some filters that we'll take a look at in the next slide. So you can see on the Google Shopping property, um, we do have more options. Um, the images are front and center, but you'll also notice on the left-hand side that you can filter by price, by brand, and even by offers like free shipping. Um, another important point here is that even though this person is shopping on a computer, we do still offer them features like nearby stores. So if they're looking to go out later this evening or this weekend and actually purchase something nearby, they can of course filter that way as well. So product listing ads for shoppers on the go, these are the two features I mentioned. So we have Google Shopper, which is actually an app that people can download on the left. We also have google.com forward slash shopping, just the normal website, but in mobile friendly version. So with Shopper, it's actually a little more of a curated experience. So you'll notice that images, color are front and center. It's more for people who are browsing, maybe looking to get inspired, maybe getting gift ideas. What they're really looking for are product suggestions, related products, those types of things. Um, new features on Shopper also include today's offer, where you can get deals on places to eat, shop, and play. Um, they can also subscribe to Google's offers to get emails um, on a daily basis or semi-regular basis, and then also nearby offers. So this would be, again, because they're on their mobile phone, we can see what's around them, what, what, what stores around them are offering offers, and get them special deals from there. And then again on the right, just take a look at that. You'll notice very similar to kind of the traditional computer or PC version, um, you know, title, price, image, but on the mobile phone. So you'll notice the top one also has a nearby store. So I know we just covered a lot of information, so I do encourage you to submit those questions in the Q&A tab, um, but I also want to highlight going forward a few retailers who have had um, some success on Google Shopping. So we'll dive into those um, right here, but again, share those questions. So East Bay is a company um, that offers online inventory of athletic shoes, clothing, and sporting equipment from a variety of major brands. They partnered with a leading search marketing agency called Inceptor, and together they launched a product listing ad campaign. Um, the actual users have said, since launching PLAs, we've found that the program offers not only efficient revenue, but also an easier way to manage product inventory for campaigns with great targeting options and premium real estate within the search engine results page. And the image-based result cuts through the clutter of text ads. So my background is in working with small and medium businesses, so there's a couple of things I want to specifically call out from this client testimonial. So first of all, they mentioned that it's an easier way to manage product inventory for campaigns. Um, I know from working with those SMBs that time um, isn't always kind of forefront, and they don't necessarily have the resources to get dedicate to managing campaigns. So with this, you get an easier way to actively manage your product listing ads. So, you know, that initial setup does take some time, but after that, you're good to roll. Um, another thing I wanted to just point out is they mentioned that the image-based results cuts through the clutter of text ads. I think that that's one of my favorite selling points of product listing ads. They really do pop because they are the only images on a search page and the only way you'll get images on a search page. So think about that, um, especially when people are searching for specific products, that makes them pop and they get right there quickly. So we have two more case studies here. I'm not going to go through them in detail, um, but do check out these URLs provided on the slides once the recording is sent out if you're interested in downloading the full case study. I'll just kind of mention what the company does so that in case it's closer to your marketing goals, you'll be able to see some successful stories. Um, so toolking.com sells more than 120,000 products online, including tools, hardware, and home improvement items, outdoor goods, and they work across several e-commerce platforms. So that's a good one to take a look at. And last but not least, 
Adorama um, is one of America's largest photo retailers and mail order suppliers. So certainly if any of these goals sound familiar to yours, take a look at that case study. All right, so we know kind of the landscape in terms of the consumer, and we also know how Google Shopping fits in to address the unique needs um, now. But how do you actually get started? Well, in these next couple of slides, we're going to go through some tangible steps you can take to start running a product listing ad campaign, and then later on we'll discuss optimization techniques. So um, the first thing you'll need to do when setting up a PLA or product listing ad campaign is have a Google Merchant Center. Once you have that set up, you'll notice on the left-hand side under the Settings tab, um, you can click into AdWords. From here, if you already have an AdWords account, you can link it by using the 10-digit customer ID. And if you're new to AdWords, you can certainly click that Get Started link. Next. Step two, you'll customize your campaign. So there'll be two main points of customization. The first is entering a cost per click or CPC bid. This is the absolute max you're willing to pay for a click on a product to your product page. Um, the next thing, budget, is like it sounds a daily budget. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll spend this amount on any given day, but it's the maximum amount you're willing to spend. We often have people ask about monthly budgets. I'll just kind of clarify that by saying if you do have a monthly or quarterly budget in mind, obviously you can just take that budget, divide it by 30 or 90 days to uh, get that daily budget. And last but not least, provide your billing information. So this is the final step. Um, you'll enter your billing information in AdWords and uh, you can proceed there directly from your Merchant Center account. So now I'd like to go through some best practices that my team uses when optimizing PLA campaigns. Um, again, I just want to stress if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to chat them in in that Q&A tab. So just to run through the six tips real quickly, we're going to talk about using an all products target, breaking out high value product segments, bidding strategically, which is kind of a no-brainer, but we'll dive into it a little deeper, promoting your special offerings, refining your traffic, and ultimately also improving your data quality. So first and foremost, you should always have an all products target in your PLA campaigns. Basically, this target makes every product in your feed eligible to show as a PLA when users are searching for the products you have. I've heard merchants say that they don't necessarily want to actively advertise every single product since only a portion are, you know, represent their highest gem revenue generators, but this is a fair point. In fact, we strongly suggest that you use an all products target with the lowest bid of any of the targets in your campaign. That way, the products you've singled out are actually your more competitive products. You can also think of this all products target as a catch-all. Um, we know that users are everywhere and they're searching all the time. So this all product target makes sure that you're eligible to show PLAs when people are actively searching for your items. Number two, break out your high value product targets. So another benefit of using an all products target is that it can actually help you identify your highest volume items. So you can use what's called the search query report or the SQR to identify what search terms users are actually typing in to trigger your PLAs. Based on this information, you might find patterns that you hadn't singled out previously, and you can then target those products more aggressively. So we're going to use Acme Bike as an example. So take a look at that diagram on the right. Acme was only using an all products target with a promotional text that read, everything ships same day, and they were bidding 50 cents on that. From looking at their search query report, they found that many of their top queries related to mountain bikes. So they hadn't considered um, targeting mountain bikes because it's typically their low season for the products right now, but they decided to break out a product target using the target um, product type equals mountain bikes. So their promotional text read free helmet with bike purchase, and then they're bidding higher. So they're bidding that $1 because it represents a higher value segment of their business with these mountain bikes versus the products in their all products target. So 
So next we're going to talk about bidding strategically. So I know this doesn't sound like much of a best practice because it seems intuitive, right? Of course you're going to bid strategically. But I'd argue that bidding strategically takes a bit more effort with PLAs because you can't actually bid at the keyword level like you can in regular search campaigns. So think about it this way. The structure of your PLA campaign should reflect your product segments, and the bid associated with that structure should correlate to the product's value. So take a look at the Acme Bike example, using them again. They have product targets set up using various product attributes like brand, product type, and condition. Each one of these groups contains products that have a certain value to the business. So since McQuinn is their highest margin product, they're willing to pay the most for clicks on those products. In contrast, they don't earn as much from refurbished items, so they're only going to bid 75 cents for those clicks. Again, as a reminder, of our, a reminder of our best practice, they're using their lowest bid on their all products targets, again, just functioning as a catch-all. One last note um, and a little bit of a plug for customizing your feed. Um, sometimes it can be hard to find a common attribute for groups of products that are more or less arbitrarily grouped. So think two common scenarios for this are best sellers as well as clearance items. In these cases, it can be good to use AdWords labels or AdWords grouping to clump products together within your Merchant Center data feed. Um, so if Acme has some road bikes, some mountain bikes, and some apparel on clearance, they can use an AdWords label in their Merchant Center feed to tag those items as clearance items and then use the um, product target AdWords label equals clearance. Just one more um, plug about bidding strategically. So this is actually brand new to PLAs and will be available March 2013. Um, it's called Budget Optimizer, but it's also known as Automatic Bidding Frequently. And ultimately what it allows you to do is specify a maximum CPC bid you're willing to pay within a particular campaign. From this bid, Google will automatically adjust your bids up and down to deliver as many clicks as possible within a given day. Um, this is especially perfect for merchants who don't necessarily have the time or resources to manually adjust bids, but it's also great for new products where you might not know what bids should be manually set to. This way you can start by having Google automatically adjust bids and find out what works, and then down the road, if you're so inclined, you can always adjust that bid manually. All right, so promoting special offerings. So kind of as I alluded to in the last slide, it's another best practice to differentiate your promotional offerings by product segment as much as possible. So while a generic like free shipping offer isn't bad, people are more likely to buy if the offer is specific to the product that they are specifically looking to uh, purchase or are considering. So again, campaign structure is absolutely important here. If you have two different product targets in the same ad group, you won't be able to specify which products should get which promotional text. So instead, think about keeping it to one product target per ad group and then one promotional message per ad group as well. So taking a look at the screenshot on the right, um, you can see that this is demonstrated in Acme Bikes account. Um, so on their all products target, they have their generic 10% off all in-stock products offer, whereas on their clearance items, they get the promotional message, super saving on clearance, 50% off. Um, don't, it's certainly not required to include promotional text. However, where you can, uh, I certainly recommend you do. Refining traffic. So we talked about the search query report in a previous slide, but it bears mentioning again for a slightly different purpose. Um, so again, just to review, the search query report shows you the search terms people are actually using to find your products. Sometimes you'll find that search terms are triggering PLAs from the wrong ad group. For instance, Acme Bikes saw that a search on children's bikes was pulling products from their mountain bike ad group, but they don't actually sell any children's mountain bikes. So what they were able to do is identify that these terms are triggering the wrong products and then add negative keywords to the mountain bike ad group, like kids, children's, child. And what that will do is if somebody is specifically looking for a children's or a child mountain bike, those ads will no longer show. Um, not only does this help them save money on clicks, but it also helps them prevent people from getting to their site, not finding what they need, and leaving. 
Also, just as a brief note, it should be pretty rare, but if you ever see a search term that is unrelated to any of your products, you can always add negatives at the campaign level as well, and that will prevent your ads from showing on those terms in any ad group. All right, improving data quality. So most of what we talked about to this point has involved optimizing your PLA campaigns from the AdWords front end. That said, another important component of PLAs is the actual information you submit to Google about your products in your Merchant Center account. It's absolutely essential to provide the most comprehensive, up-to-date information possible because this is what Google uses to match your items to potential customers. So a great place to start with data quality is, you probably will never guess it, but the data quality tab in your Merchant Center account. Here you'll find error and optimization suggestions based on actual scans of your data feed. At very least, I'd recommend checking in with this tab about once a month. Another couple thoughts on data quality. Um, you know they say that a picture is worth a thousand words. I think it's especially true of PLAs since the visual a product gives is, has a lot of information, especially when it's well done. Since you don't have a lot of space for text in your titles, really take the time to consider your image quality. Think about things like background and angles and product position, etc. Basically, these images should be a glamour shot of your items, making it look as best as it can. Additionally, and I think this goes without saying, make sure to use all of the required attributes in your feed. Um, sometimes the lack of a required attribute won't actually prevent your ad from showing, but it does affect where they're eligible to show and how accurately products are matched to users' search queries. So you're going to want to submit optional and recommended attributes whenever they make sense as well, because of course the more information we have about your product, the better we can match to user search. So just to review, again, um, you can see those six points. Uh, I would specifically focus on the all products target as well as the um, refining traffic and improving data quality, specifically if you're looking to get better return on investment with your ads. So believe it or not, we've breezed through the content, and now we're in the Q&A portion of this. So please type any questions into the Q&A widget at the bottom of your console. I'll give you a minute to do so. Um, and please remember, if you can't stay or don't want to stay for the Q&A section, uh, take a moment to fill out that survey. Again, you do get entered to win a Nexus 7 tablet, so uh, make sure to do that. Again, I'll give you a moment to type out those questions, and I'll start reading the ones already submitted, and we'll get started in just a second. Okay, so we've got a couple of really good questions in here. So a couple of them are similar, and they relate to AdWords labels as well as AdWords grouping. So I want to address those first. Um, the first question I have here is, are we able to set up as many AdWords targets as we want on each product? So good distinction. So you are able to set up pretty much as many AdWords labels as you'd like on any target. So for instance, um, uh, you know, a, a certain model of mountain bike could fall under the AdWords label mountain bike, clearance, um, you know, and seasonal, whatever labels you come up with. Absolutely, you can do that with labels. With groupings, you're only able to have one group per item. So for instance, a mountain bike that was on clearance and also a mountain bike would only have one or the other AdWords grouping. So labels, yes, you can set up as many as you'd like, and groupings can only have one. So another one to address, I got the question, how do you exclude product type equals clearance from your general catch-all campaigns if you create a specific sale or clearance PLA campaign? So um, while you can't necessarily exclude the category product type equals clearance, 
the way you control that is with bids. So if you're bidding higher, let's say, for some reason, on your product type equals clearance, you're bidding a dollar, that's why you want that all products target to be lower. Because if you're bidding a dollar on the clearance items, it's going to show through that higher bid category, and it's not going to show in that all products category. Um, so that bid is really the way that you have the mechanism to control wh where each product shows. Great question about the search query report. Um, the question is, where is it located in the AdWords tool? So for traditional cam uh, keyword-based campaigns, it's actually located under the keyword tab. Um, I think there's a screenshot of it in the presentation, so definitely check that out in the recording. But for PLA campaigns, it's actually under the Auto Targets tab. So you'll notice under your Auto Targets tab, you'll have the graph, um, depending on your date range, and then right underneath that, it should say See Search Terms or Search Query Report. It's a little drop-down menu, and that's where you'll be able to find it. But again, check out the screenshot in the presentation once that's sent out. Another question about actually setting up the PLA campaign. So the question is, do you need to set up budgets in AdWords and the Merchant Center account? Um, really great question. Basically, the way that we went through in the presentation of setting up campaigns is a specific way of setting it up. Um, it only gives you an all products target, and it's basically meant to be fast and easy. So you only set up the budget in the Merchant Center account and the bid there. If you're setting up product listing ad campaigns in AdWords, you will manage the budget in the bids in the AdWords account. So it's kind of two different workflows for setting up the campaign. You don't need to manage it in both places, just one or the other, depending on where you set it up. Question about promotional text. Um, the question was, where does the promotional text show up? Um, sometimes it seems to only show up in Google Shopping searches and sometimes only in the product. So the promotional text kind of moves sometimes. Um, right now, I believe if you hover over a product, it will have in that dropdown where, what, what the promotional text is. But again, you know, Product listing ads are shown many, many different ways across devices, you know, on Google Shopping, on Google Search. So you'll kind of, it'll show up in different places. And, you know, I would recommend for getting a feel for it, just go and browse, you know, look at products, you know, do some shopping there yourself, and you'll really get a sense of both what's effective for other people, but also kind of where everything is. A question about where would you actually input clearance into the PLA data feed? So again, this would be where you would choose to use either AdWords groupings or AdWords labels. Um, so under, you know, when you set up your spreadsheet of products or your data feed, as an attribute, you can use AdWords groupings or AdWords labels. Again, if you choose groupings, each product row can only have one grouping. If you choose to use labels, each product row can have multiple labels, and that's where you would designate a product clearance. And then we know that it's a clearance product, so when you set up the product target AdWords label equals clearance, we'll know to scan your feed and pull all of the items that are tagged with that label. So think about it like tags. Think about it like labels. It's basically a way for you to arbitrarily group items together that don't share similar attributes. Instead, what they share is this label or this tag in the data feed. A question about um, the slide that featured the two mobile phones. Um, so the question was, why were those interfaces different? Was one phone on Google Shopper while the other was normal search results page? Um, exactly, so pretty much. So the, the phone on the left where it had more color, more images, that was actually the Google Shopper app. Um, and again, what that does is it's providing a curated experience and you have to actually download it. Um, the phone on the right was featuring the mobile version of the Google Shopping site. So that's what that difference was. And again, hopefully the recording will clarify that as well.
great question about the availability of PLAs globally. Um, the question simply was, are PLAs available globally or just a few, uh, just available in a few countries at this time? So PLAs are available globally. Um, they're, it's being rolled out where right now internationally in several countries, there's still um, options to do search results without PLAs. So soon everybody will be on PLAs, but yes, they should be available globally. Question about bidding. Um, it says, so to create a breakout group, you have to bid higher than the base rate of your PLA. Um, so if by base rate, I think you're referring to the all products target bid, then yes. The idea would be, let's take two examples. So if I'm new, I'm probably just going to create an all products target because I don't necessarily know what's going to work for me. Within that all products target, maybe I bid $1 because it's the only way that I'm targeting ads. Once I have some data and I start to break out more strategic product segments, I might lower that bid to like 50 cents or 75 cents and then break out the specific product segments at higher bids. So it's not necessarily that you can't lower that all products target once you've done more account development. It's just that you do want to bid higher on those specific product segments because typically they represent more valuable products than everything in your feed. Think of the catch-all as like kind of the lowest common denominator. You want to bid on your all products target the most you're willing to pay for a click on any of those items. So in Acme Bikes, they don't care whether it's their bike gloves that show or whether it's a mountain bike that shows. All of those are available to show from their all products target, and let's say they're only willing to bid 50 cents on the gloves. That's what they want to bid. Questions here as they come in? Um, question, another question about groupings versus labels. Um, what is the recommended usage of groupings versus labels? So in case um, we missed it, just to reiterate, groupings would be for any product where it only needs one label. I would say that in most cases, labels are your better bet because you have the ability to insert multiple per product. So um, you know there are use cases for groupings, but in most cases, labels will be will do the trick and will give you more flexibility. Um, in that case, though, one thing to note with labels is let's say you have, let's take Acme Bike, just because we've been talking about them a lot today. Um, let's say you have a grouping for your mountain bike, and that grouping is mountain bike. Or I'm sorry, let's say you have a label that has, for a mountain bike, that has the label mountain bike as well as the label clearance. If you have a product type that is targeting AdWords label equals clearance, as well as a label AdWords label equals mountain bike, those bids are going to potentially compete against each other because that product falls into two categories. So the only sense there, the only kind of comment there is make sure that you're bidding higher on the product target that is more valuable. So you'd want to bid higher on the product target for mountain bikes probably than for your clearance items because it's going to show with the one that's more competitive. Question from Christine, are there step-by-step -step instructions from se for setting promotional copy? Um, yes, there are. Uh, they are available in the AdWords and the Merchant Center Help Centers. So what I'd recommend and what I do when I'm looking for an article to reference, um, I would just go to Google.com and search for something like promotional text merchants or promotional text product listing ad, and you should find within the top few results um, something from one of our help centers. Um, but then also, yeah, so I would check there. Otherwise, it should be a screenshot in the presentation when it's sent out. Basically, you go to your ads tab and um, that product listing ad, you can edit that and there will be a line for you to put in promotional text.
Question from Diego, does this have a close relationship with Google Merchant Center or is it totally another thing? Um, so the relationship between AdWords and Merchant Center is really that Merchant Center is the base of your product listing ads. So the information you submit to your Merchant Center will directly correlate into how your ads are served. So that's why I say kind of the better your information is in Google Merchant Center, the better you're going to have success with product listing ads. Um, you know, if you give really really short descriptions, like not very keyword rich titles, if you don't submit all the required or recommended attributes, Google doesn't have a lot to go with in terms of matching your, your user's query to your products. So in that sense, they're very related. Um, so I would think about, again, data quality. Question about adding negative keywords. So to add negative keywords for PLAs, you'll do this under the Keywords tab. At the very bottom of the Keywords tab, you'll see uh, on the left a blue link that says negative keywords. You'll click that to expand, and that's where you'll be able to input negative keywords. A question about targeting from Christina about targeting PLAs in different countries. Um, so basically it looks like the question is can you target PLAs to different countries even if you only have a website in English? Um, so the website information needs to match the information submitted in the Merchant Center. So if your website is in English, your data feed can be submitted in English. Um, you certainly, let's say you want to target you know, Brazil or something, you certainly can upload an English data feed, um, but you know, kind of the ability of where it will serve depends on the user's search query. So if they're searching in English, you could potentially show, um, you know, depending on their language settings as well as yours. Um, it's a very good question, and uh, yeah, it definitely gets a little, um, you know, requires a little bit more thought when targeting product listing ads to mul multiple countries. Another thing I'll say about that is the kind of the best practice right now is that you only, if you're targeting, let's say you're targeting the U.S., Canada, and Brazil you'll actually need to upload three data feeds even if they're the exact same thing, each data feed, it requires you to select a country that that data feed is targeting. So you'll have one data feed targeting the U.S., one targeting Canada, and one targeting Brazil. Then from there, when you create your product listing ads campaigns, you'll have three product listing ads campaigns, one for the U.S., one for Canada, one for Brazil. That way, you know, even if they're exactly the same, if there are differences in the product offerings or in the price or in the tax and shipping information, Google AdWords will know which merchant center feed to pull from because it's that one-to-one -one country match. Question from Zach about what does adding new regular keywords to a product listing campaign do? Um, nothing. <laughs> There's, you know, keywords are not part of the equation with product listing ads. So the only thing that keywords will have an impact on is if they're negative. So negative keywords will streamline traffic and prevent your ads from showing in certain search queries. But if you added a whole slew of keywords to a product listing ad campaign, it wouldn't have um, any impact. Also a good question from Tricia, seems related. Is there any value in using positive keywords? Um, no. <laughs> Erica has a question about character limits for PLA promotional text. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but when you start to type your promotional text in the interface, it will stop you when you get to the end. Um, it's fairly long. Uh, I've never reached it when creating campaigns myself, but yeah, I don't know the exact character limit, but it does stop you as a cutoff.
question from Kevin. Um, the question was, can you do PLAs without having a Merchant Center account right now? Um, the answer is no. The Merchant Center account is what houses your data feed, and that data feed is exactly the information that the product listing ads pull from, so absolutely essential to running a campaign. Claire has a question about impression share for PLAs. Um, great question. Uh, basically, the question is, is there a report that we can see impression share for PLAs? At this time, there's not, um, but it's definitely an often requested feature, so uh, feedback certainly noted um, and will be taken in back to our teams. Dan had a question about how do PLAs display differently on different devices. Um, the question is a good one. Um, I would say that the best way to figure this out is just start doing searches. Um, you know, definitely learn from your learn from others, other merchants, and also competitors. Figure out what they're doing. Figure out what you want to adopt and how you're going to improve on it. Um, but also just figure out what the display differences are. Fundamentally, there's not a whole lot of difference in the sense that they'll always show a title, um, they'll show an image, and they'll show a price. But kind of the details or the amount of detail available may vary across certainly the shopper app, um, the Google Shopping property, as well as Google Search on mobile and computers. So lots of different devices, lots of different uh, interfaces, definitely just check it out, start searching, um, start shopping that way, and it will all become pretty familiar pretty quickly. Ahmed had a question about organizing PLA campaigns, um, basically saying, so we would organize our PLA campaign by category or product, and then create a new campaign and select an all products target. Um, so the best practice is simply having an all products target. So if you have one campaign that you're doing all of your product listing activity in, and that has a, has a budget of $100 a day, there's no reason that you necessarily need to split out a new campaign for the all products target. Um, rather, it's only if the all products, you only want that to take up 10% of your daily budget, let's say, so you'd only give it a daily budget of $10, and then the other campaign would have $90. The only reason you would split out those campaigns is if you have budget caps in mind for each one. Um, as far as best practice, I would say just have an all products target, and generally speaking, putting it in the same campaign is perfectly sufficient, again, unless you have budget constraints that you want to impose. Question from Erica, um, can you segment out between general PLA ads and Google Shopping app performance? Um, not at this time in the interface. Um, again, our goal is to create a consistent performance across Google Search and the shopping property itself. So we're working to just make sure that you're showing on everything when it's appropriate. So the kind of short answer is not currently. I'm going to take one last question, and um, we will kind of wrap it up from there. Um, so last question I'm going to take here, because we're running out of time, is what is the difference between product listing ads and product extensions? So product extensions are actually an ad format. They will show your ads based on search query, whereas product extensions are simply an extension on a keyword targeted campaign. So for instance, if you're targeting keywords like digital cameras, your ad could potentially show, but it's going to be a 
ad that goes to your website, and then underneath that would be specific products from your Merchant Center feed that seem related to digital cameras. So while the product extensions act similar to PLAs in that it's kind of a direct link that they can click on to get to a product page, um, they are different in the sense that they are only attached to keyword targeted campaigns. So I think that does it for us. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, hope this was useful. And please do fill out that survey if you have a second. Next is seven on the line. Um, and uh, thank you again. Have a good one.